Hello everybody, welcome to Nintendo Pop Black here on Watch First Games. I'm your host, the Enlightened Insider, Eddie V. Joining me, making her guest return, the Celestial Brush herself, Mr. Celeste Roberts. Hey, good evening, thanks for having me again. Our Indie Insider, Mr. Dan Murphy. How's everybody doing tonight? And our devastating Dungeoneer, Mr. David Nassim. Hey everybody. Hello everybody. Uh, we are doing a recorded show. I apologize. We started having technical difficulties, so I had to figure some things out. Uh, my first time trying to produce the show didn't work out. Uh, me and Twitch are having some arguments at this time, but hopefully next week we will get it together. I'll be able to stream it, produce it, and you guys will be able to see the show. Um, but Everybody, this is episode 231 of Nintendo Power Block Podcast. Each and every week we come together to talk about games and everything we love about them with our friends. You can join us live on Monday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash Games Live and be a part of the conversation. But if you can't join us live, no big deal. You can head over to youtube.com slash Games and BushwitchGames.com to watch the show or listen on your podcast service of choice. Remember to subscribe follow, rate, and review wherever you consume us. It helps us out with discoverability and check out our familiar shows wherever you listen to your podcast. So how was everybody's weekend? Uh, Mine was good slash bad. Good for the fact that I pretty much had the whole weekend off from work. Uh, the bad thing is uh, Saturday night my car got uh, <laughs> stuck in my driveway and I couldn't go to work or anything and uh, the day of this recording, I actually had to go and take the train to work. Um, uh, but someone came in, uh, got us unstuck, and now I, I could drive my car, and I'm so happy. Uh, but I literally I got subway. Uh, but I'll talk about that in the snack too, though, because I kind of did a bad thing, though it was supposed to be for work purposes, I should say. Um, but what about you, Dan? Uh, how was your weekend? It was pretty good. We got a little bit of snow. Um, it was the first time my dog saw snow, so it was a lot of fun. I went outside in the yard and played with him a bit, and he was like beyond excited. He's a six-month-old puppy, so um, I, I had a blast. It, it it was a nice and relaxing weekend for me. Yes. What about you, Celeste? Oh, it was it was really nice. I <laughs> donated blood and almost passed out, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Ah, what about you, David? Uh, it was it was an all right weekend. I was buried in essays all weekend, so it, those it was that time of year where we're at the end of the semester for the school I teach at, and I was grading essays, which is miserable on my <laughs> my nights and weekends. <laughs> but I did get to find some relief uh, playing some Xenoblade Chronicles, so that was good. Yes. Yay. Yes. Well, everybody, because uh, I got some stuff to talk about when we get playing with power. But uh, it's time for a snack tendo. Dan, what has been in your snack tendo? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't really think about that. I've actually been, uh, you know, so our um, our stove and everything runs on propane, and we ran out of propane this week. So it's been kind of a rough time <laughs> when it comes to eating anything. Uh, that way, so I'm gonna bow out a snack tendo this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Les, what did you have for your snack tendo? Timmy brought home a small pecan king cake from a local <sighs> store. Uh, and I, I was just like, can I, can I marry one of you guys? Can I be there? <laughs> you can was... just come over. We don't have to have any legal obligations <laughs> to enjoy king cake. <laughs> Was there uh was there a uh, toy in the king cake? Was a baby in it? So they so when I was growing up, the baby would be hidden in one of the slices whenever you bought it. And mm. now because of potential choking choking hazards, the baby is on full display, so it is up to the consumers whether they want to hide it in a slice or not. But I hope if you're eating king cake, y- you are aware there's a chance there could be a small plastic baby in your slice. <laughs> So please be careful whenever you're eating king cake. Ah, it looked it so good when you said I just I love a pecan cake. Like I love even pecan pies, I just love. Um do you guys say pecan or pecan? Pecan. Pecan. I'm a pecan, I said pecan. guy. 
<laughs> of course you are, Dan. <laughs> David, well, you and I are gonna have to join forces against this I guy. call I call caramel caramel. Like I don't even uh say C A R A M E L. I just say C A R M E L car uh caramel. caramel. Yeah, I do I do too. Caramel. Yeah. That, yeah, so some of my St. Louis people get mad because we don't say soda, we say pop, and they're just like, "It's not pop." I'm like, "Well, in the Midwest, in the hood, <laughs> it is." <laughs> so, uh, David, what has been in your snack tin, though? You guys are gonna think I'm so weird, um, but I love spice and I love sweet things. So lately, um, I've been eating ice cream with cracked pepper on it and cayenne pepper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like just as a topping what kind of ice yeah. cream like just any like this weekend i had ben and jerry's half baked so chocolate and peanut butter but then Ooh. like getting cracked cracked pepper on top or sprinkling cayenne pepper on it and it, it's so good like i, <laughs> I need it. this so, in my this life is the craziest thing i've ever heard <laughs> i'm gonna try it how you, did you come up with I this i thought i was crazy and then she tried it and she admitted i was right which is <laughs> a win Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, for me, I actually had a cold cut trio from Subway. Now, I haven't had Subway in about four years and everything. And uh, I was supposed to go have my sandwich for my dinner because I was supposed to be staying overnight at work. And they ended up canceling us. And so I had got prepared. I had my sandwich. I bought some Ruffles, sour cream and cheese, um, potato chips. I bought four boxes of Dots. I had two Arizonas, uh, mango and uh, fruit punch. I had a monster uh, mango to go because I had to stay there uh, and I had to stay up while they do the floors and everything. And I just had all of this food and I got through most of it. I still got a lot of dots left, um, but the subway was really, really good. I just haven't had them in such a long time. And I was just like, oh, I missed this. I was, I forgot to get the Black Forest ham, but I was just, I, the weather was so bad and I had to get the work. I was just like, you know what? I am just going to get this cold cut trio. These are the t- toppings. Don't toast it. Give me my food and I'll be out your way. And I had two chocolate chip cookies that was delicious. Uh, I like so much. Are you, are you waiting for those dots to get a little chewier? Just like perfect, perfect dotness. Yes, we we normally get fresh dots every Wednesday, so <laughs> every, so I go and buy them, uh, because our mo- they're considered as movie theater candy, and so they continue to sell throughout the week and everything. Um, so I have brought some. I have just brought some. I know Dan is not feeling it. He don't like them, <laughs> uh, and that's all. That's all fine. Um, I still but- haven't had my fresh batch yet, so I'm gonna wait until I find the. Uh, <laughs> mysterious <laughs> fresh batch that exists. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> hey, what uh, other quick snack tended thing have you have you tried crows? They're black licorice dots. Ugh. Oh. They're so good. Not only are they taking dots, they're making them black licorice. Who the hell is buying that? <laughs> Us, David and I. It's less than I are on the same page. Wow. I cannot do <laughs> I have tried to do black licorice, and I'm like, ah, no. Can't do it. And I, and I think it's because I'm an Aries, and uh, <laughs> Aries like stuff sweet. Uh, we can't really do f- f- uh, spicy stuff. Like, I can't really do a lot of sour things. Um, but I will eat some sour candy. Um, the sweeter, the better. Uh, we like we continue talk about coffee. I know Dan and David take their coffee black. I take my coffee with cream and sugar because of uh, growing up when I'm making it as a kid, I had cream and sugar. And even now, black coffee just like man, it just doesn't do it for me because that bitterness gets to me and stuff. Even though I like lemon cake, you know, not like the lemon filling and donuts and stuff. But that's tart. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I think you could deal with tart. Yeah. What about you, Celeste? Did you ever my, tell us how you my coffee? Yeah. I mean, I love sugar, but I've been trying to reduce how much. I don't have diabetes or anything. I'm just trying to reduce how much sugar I intake. So I've been using sugar-free creamers. Do you or do just like milk? Do you, oh, 
I was going to ask, did you do like the like flavor kinds, yes. like the Dunkin' Donut ones and stuff? Uh, yeah, like what is it, Coffee Made or the Great Value brand? I try to find the sugar free version. Oh, okay. And I, I like the um, Taranti, Talanti. It's these sugar free coffee syrups. Mm-hmm. They're they're pretty good. I'm I'm just, I know I can't live forever, and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and just as much sugar as I used to when I was a kid. So yes. So everybody, and also everybody, get your coffee because uh, when we get to talk the walk a little bit later on um, this month, we are discussing coffee talk, and we are going to have our own coffees talking about <laughs> coffee talk. I can't so, wait. I'm excited. Oh, we're so happy to have you. Yes, it's going to be <laughs> amazing. Well, everybody, it's time for our game fact events. Uh, so that's how you're doing it, or Dan, are you doing it? I hope I'm not doing it because I'm not scared. Oh, David. David. Surprise. That's lost. (laughs) All right. So this is uh, just a quick one. So the Super Mario Kart in Japan actually featured drinking and driving. Um, The original (laughs) Mario Buddies racing game had characters like Bowser and Princess Peach celebrate their victories by pulling out a bottle of champagne and chugging away. The Uptights Americans said no way, and Mario and friends were forced to celebrate sober. And oh. that's my game fact advance. <laughs> All right. I can see that advance. not selling well in, in the U.S. Exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if someone is still, do, still doing it, but who knows. Well, everybody, it's time for Femi News. David, take it away. All right. Thank you. Our first story tonight, it's 2021 and Burger King has Nintendo toys. Mm, This comes from GamesRadar.com. This is uh, courtesy of Jordan Gerblick. Burger King is bagging its kids' meals with Nintendo toys inspired by Animal Crossing New Horizons, Luigi's Mansion 3, Super Mario Maker 2, Splatoon 2, Link's Awakening, and Mario Kart 8. Burger King's uh, 2021 Nintendo toy collection includes Luigi with his Poltergust G00, Metal Mario from Mario Kart 8, Link from Link's Awakening, an Animal Crossing maze toy, Construction Worker Mario from Mario Maker 2, and a Green Squid from Splatoon 2. The promotion runs from today until March 15th at participating restaurants. The Burger King Nintendo toys are just one part of this limited time deal, celebrating the upcoming release of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. From February 8 to 22, you can get the Super Mario meal, which is just a Whopper meal, and you'll be entered for a chance to win a Switch and Super Mario World 3D plus Bowser's Fury. And even if you don't win, the meal gets you 100 platinum points to spend on the Switch eShop. Ooh. Yes. Uh, <sighs> our next story, uh, we're, we're just going to keep it moving here. Um, speculation that a Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom battle sequel could be in the works. We've got some excitement on the panel for that one. So this is from, and I love this name, Nintendo Jam uh, via GoNintendo.com. So uh reddit user theme park fan 2020 discovered an unusual and possibly suspicious change to ubisoft's official rabbits twitter account handle leading some to speculate that an announcement for a possible sequel to mario plus rabbits kingdom battle may be imminent previously at rabbits official the username has been updated as at mario rabbits this change is particularly interesting considering it happened so suddenly almost four years after the release of the original crossover due to the success of the original it doesn't seem too unlikely that a successor could be in development so uh for our panel and feel free to also comment on the burger king story if that's got you hungry to say something um <laughs> is this a plausible rumor what would you most like to see in a mario plus rabbits kingdom sequel uh battle sequel so we'll start with dan what do you got for that one? Ooh, i don't know what i'd like to see in a rabbits uh sequel because i i really thought it was kind of the perfect strategy rpg it was re it, you know it was difficult to the point where you actually had to come up with a game plan versus a lot of strategy rpgs even you know i love fire emblem but a lot of the battles can be won by just lure and counter so um with the way the each character had unique skills there was a different way to set up every fight um I just, I don't know. I, I'm just excited. I don't care what they do. I know it's going to be great. 
Right. Ed, what about you? <clears throat> uh, I think I want to see Raymond back in here uh, where the rabbits came from. I'd like to see him be uh, a player and probably more some more amiibo, um, amiibo usage in it. Like maybe you put down Samus uh, into your game and you guys get Samus gun and stuff to shoot to shoot around um, or costumes and stuff. I think they need to have more amiibo integration in Mario Rabbids 2. Um, keep it funny. Keep uh, I still think work with the Mario characters in universe. Um, and you know, you they could pull from anywhere uh, from this one. Uh, I would love that's what I would love to see, but I'm happy. And definitely for the Burger King game, the Burger King stuff, um, I'm old school. So McDonald's had Nintendo <laughs> toys also. Uh, and so I used to get McDonald's and uh, the Happy Meals just to get the mm-hmm. Nintendo toys. So this is the kind of the same thing. I know I'm supposed to be on the diet and working out and losing weight, <laughs> but a little fried, little small drink and a burger would do me justice with a little reward of a Nintendo toy. And that's all I was just gonna say. Uh, I could treat myself before I go into work. That that would be my excuse. Um, but I I hope to collect all all of these toys. I think it's really cool that they teamed up with Burger King to do that. That's awesome. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, just to echo before we go to Celeste, I I also uh, got those from McDonald's as a kid, and that definitely hit me right in the the emotional feels there seeing those um and also i I liked your point about more amiibo that's one thing i hope to see from nintendo this year is a recommitment to amiibo because it seems like maybe that's fading a little bit maybe that could just be my perspective but i'd like to see it with all the anniversaries um more amiibo celeste uh any thoughts on those two stories uh, my babysitter's son had a little Goomba wind-up toy back in the day. Am, am I misremembering? Wasn't nope, there a nope, little that's, Goomba nope. yeah. from the Happy Meals? I might have to go pick up a Burger King Happy Meal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really curious to see what these toys look like. I, listeners, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can buy them, just the toys. I don't know. I, th- I think that's a thing. I, Dan is after me to play Mario and Rabbids. <laughs> and he's told me many times how I need to play it, and it's so fun. And I believe Grant Kirkhope is the composer mm-hmm. for this, right? Mm-hmm. So, oh, the music has to be awesome then. It is. It's, it's really so good. good. I've, I've even, I even told one of my friends to play it. I like, I was badgering him to play it for so long. And then I finally told him I would refund him double the money if he didn't <laughs> like it. And he ended up loving it. So <laughs> quite the endorsement. Exactly. All right. Well, our next story uh, is one that I'm pretty excited about. So Animal Crossing January update brings a few welcome surprises and an old friend. This is coming from Julia Lee via Poly- Polygon. So Animal Crossing New Horizons next free update features the festival celebration and the return of Pave, the festival loving peacock. Uh, Festival celebration will take place on February 15th, the day before Mardi Gras. Players will have to collect colorful feathers to witness Pave's festive dances. Nintendo will also add the Viva uh, Festival Celebration and Reaction Set, which can be purchased at Nook's Cranny for a limited time and includes a few new reactions, feeling it, Let's go, Viva and Confetti. And also fashion items will be available at the Able Sisters shop. Before Pave arrives, players will also get Valentine's Day themed goods. Chocolate hearts and heart-shaped bouquets will be available from the Nook shop and through Nook shopping February 1 through the 14. Other holiday events coming in January and February include Groundhog's Day and Big Game Celebration Day otherwise known as the Super Bowl. Uh, Pave made his debut in Animal Crossing City Folk, where he started bringing Festival to the game. Festival is the holiday inspired by Carnival, a Christian season that takes place before Lent. It is known for bright costumes, parades, and other fun stuff, which is exactly why a peacock like Pave is in charge of it. So for our panel, what aspects of the January update are you most excited about? 
Uh, and then beyond the specifics, Animal Crossing New Horizons keeps players returning to the game by having regular updates that introduce new content. Is this a good business strategy for Nintendo? Should they be charging a small fee for these updated contents like other gaming companies and developers do? So Celeste, uh, I know that you love Animal Crossing. We'll start with you. What are your reactions to this new update and what do you think about the way they keep rolling stuff out? Oh my goodness, I loved doing Festival, or we, we call it Mardi Gras. That's, they're doing the Brazilian version mm. of it. And oh, it's so much fun and New Leaf. I love Pave. Pave is adorable, so much fun. I think Pave is a he, or I'm not sure if they are gender neutral. I, I, mm. I apologize if I'm incorrect, but I before we started recording, I made sure to jump onto Animal Crossing and get the Valentine's Day themed goods. I sent some to my boyfriend, <laughs> to his little <laughs> Animal Crossing character, and I bought one of the little headdresses and I got all of the reactions. And it is adorable to throw confetti as your character and the other characters react the same way. I, uh, the big game celebration, that's cute. There's a little football shaped rug. There's a megaphone you can buy. And I, I'm curious to see if they're going to add maybe some food. Maybe they should add some king cake. Some <laughs> that, would be pretty cute. that would be really cute. So to charge them a small fee, people have been getting all this for free. Mm -hmm. That would be, I mean, not that I'm not appreciative of all of the holiday and cultural aspects, because I think it's really fun to learn about the different cultures that way, the different foods like for New Year's. If you're going to start charging us, I don't know. It's going to have to be a lot more awesome than a plate of food. Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the month <laughs> sure I don't know. what do you guys think dan you have thoughts yeah you can't charge people for that even um so animal crossing pocket camp which is a mobile game they do these kind of events to kind of bring you back over and over and i think i think nintendo does want to keep this game alive um and with with these events and having people come back you also get people talking about it and sharing photos online and that's actually free advertisement for them i think the game sells itself with these extra added you know added events and everything and it's what keeps bringing me back you know like i'm absolutely loving the snow on the island um you know, my fiance and I were playing around Christmas time, trying to get all the toys and everything and catching snowflakes. It's, uh, you know, it's keeping the game fresh and it keeps bringing people back to it. I don't think that everybody should just capitalize on something that, <laughs> you know, changes a little mm -hmm. bit from time to time. So, yeah, don't stay away from that. Charge us a big DLC for a second island. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Ed, I'm, I'm going to give you the last word, but be, before I do, I'll just play devil's advocate here because mm -hmm. on a personal level, I, I love Nintendo's business model of not, you know, indulging in microtransactions. And, you know, I can think about like Breath of the Wild had do two DLCs for the price of one and it was a reasonable price. So I love that about Nintendo. But is this basically just you know, cash that they're passing up that if they charge maybe like 99 cents for, you know, certain DIY kits or something like that, that were seasonal, <laughs> that Nintendo could bring in money that they're not. What do you, what do you think about all that, Ed? Um, so Animal Crossing has a history of when they do events and th different things throughout the year, it's always been free. It's always been unlocked and stuff. This is a different way of doing it. Uh, I think the only thing you ever have to pay for for Animal Crossing is the cards. This is a great model of keeping the, the stuff free because, you know, it's it's a simple game for casual players and even some hardcore players who want to, like, build a community who feel like, you know, they get to own their own town. And all the just added stuff and value added onto the game, even with it being a limited time theme, it's kind of rewarding players to keep them there. You know, uh, saying, hey, thank you for still playing our game after all this time. Um, here's a reward. And we want to celebrate the event just like you celebrate it in real life. And so I think it's really cool that Nintendo is doing this, that they're not charging for it or anything like that, because 
um, other gangs who do stuff like this, they don't charge. And if they do charge, it's normally in the season pass that you straight got to buy in order mm-hmm. to get this. And sometimes that season pass is not even worth worth it. So with Nintendo doing it like a little bit, things here and there and celebrating in that special way, I really think it's cool. I think, the, and hopefully they continue to do it. Nintendo know that, you know, if they really was going to charge you for something, they're going to give you a lot of content because a lot of those developers did a lot of work. I don't think a lot of the developers did that much work in this uh, or anything. Um, but like I said, I think it's good that they still do this for free. Yeah, thank you. And I, <clears throat> I agree with what all of you said. And I, I do think it's funny that Nintendo fans are probably the most cantankerous complaining bunch out there. And yet Nintendo pretty consistently puts fans first, in my opinion. I, I don't never not everybody would agree with that, but it just seems like they are not as greedy as they probably could be. Yeah, that's true. They could go down the route of VA. You know what I mean? Yeah. We could get Mario 3D World and have Peach be unlockable for $5.99. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got one more story today from the news segment, and this is a big one, so we will just touch on it a bit. A little bit of setup here. So the Robinhood app stops users from trading GameStop stocks this week, and this is coming a reporting coming from Jordan Pearson via Vice News. Uh, Controversy is surrounding the Reddit group Wall Street Bets after the group spiked the value of GameStop and forced hedge fund investors to lose enormous sums of money. While the process is somewhat complicated, what essentially happened was hedge fund managers tried to short the stock, meaning that they borrowed shares, sold them at a high price, expecting the stock to eventually drop in value before they'd have to return the borrowed stock. They would conceivably then be able to purchase the stock at a lower value, return the borrowed shares, and keep the difference for a profit. But Redditors coordinated investing efforts and caused the price of GameStop stock to soar and forced hedge funds to have to purchase back the stock at a much higher value, and they lost money in the process. So, quote, Robinhood, the the fee-free investment app that has helped Redditors and other retail investors pump dark horse stocks like GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry, and Nokia, has stopped allowing users to buy those stocks. According to screenshots shared on social media on Thursday morning, a notification appeared on Robinhood telling users they could close their position on GameStop stock, but not buy any additional shares. Redditors are currently panicking, looking for ways to transfer their shares of GameStop off Robinhood to other platforms and are generally furious at the platform. Of course, this story has been developing each day. Uh, But for our panel, what are your reactions to this story? What will the impact be on GameStop as a company, and can it be saved? Uh, so, Dan, I'll start with you. I know you have some strong opinions on this. Uh, why don't you get us started? Yeah, um, I kind of cooled off a little bit since Thursday when uh, Robin Hood <laughs> shut that down because, man, I was furious. Um, it's just, it's dirty. You know what I mean? Um, like, what drives the price of GameStop to go up is people buying. So when you stop people buying, they're trying to crash it and they're trying to trick people into being afraid of it crashing and selling it while it's high. So um, I'm actually like, I was very happy that the Redditors held on that stock stayed up and it kind of worked out in the end for them. Um, but we, you know, we don't know what's going to happen down the road when it comes to retail trading, because unfortunately, even though Davey won in this little instance, Goliath is going to is going to take over. But, um, you know, it was it was a story that made me happy just because it was fun to see somebody kick a hedge fund in the teeth for once. <laughs> so I, I'm going to keep it thin because i i do have a lot to say about it but you know i think i do really think there needs to be some sort of i know there's already a class action lawsuit against robin hood but mm-hmm. i i think action needs to be taken and i will be appalled if this hedge fund gets bailed out yeah you know it's a story that i think 
blew up for a lot of different reasons, but it, it's unique in that it, it crosses a lot of uh, worlds that don't normally mix. A lot of people go to the video game world because they want a break from politics. GameStop, obviously, you know, for better or for worse, is a big part of the gaming community and world. And so to see that, um, you know, blow up this week, I think brought a lot of people into conversation and, and had a lot of emotions going. Uh, Ed, did you have any reactions to those stories and thoughts about GameStop? Well, I, I was kind of like trying to figure out what the world was going on when it happened, because <laughs> it was just like it, it, it happened and everybody was just trying to figure out what, what's going on with GameStop. We didn't know what, you know, what was did they go out of business? Were they trying to sell stock or we didn't know that it was someone else doing it. So the hedge funds were trying to be sneaky to get more wealth. And, you know, that stuff is allowed. But, you know, redditors stopped them from doing that and now they because they had to go and borrow like what 5.1 million billion dollars like some mm -hmm. of these hedge funds they was they had to go borrow money because they lost out on so much and everything and i don't know where the stock is at now but i kind of dan broke it down to me me around the dan was talking about it we were laughing about it uh but we was just like th this is crazy this is utterly crazy uh I, one of the people at GameStop said, only thing he said was, thank you for choosing GameStop for this. <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious? Because it wasn't none of GameStop employees doing it. It was somebody completely else. So, Well, that's a thing I just want to throw out there, too. I have a lot of friends that were, like, kind of upset because they were actually thinking about investing in a GameStop and didn't. Like, don't kick yourself if you didn't buy GameStop. Game stop stock um, because this isn't this didn't happen because of the company. This literally has nothing to do with GameStop. So you did not make a poor decision by not buying into a failing company. So I just want to throw that out there. And GameStop's stock is two twenty five as as of now. It's uh, down a hundred dollars today. You know, it was great seeing uh, what people did with their money. Uh, you know, all sorts of sort of human interest stories have come out this week of people, you know, being able to go to school because of the money. Um, some people donating switches uh, to children's hospitals. So that there's been some some great uh, human interest stories that have come out of it. Celeste, I know you like to steer clear of politics, but just do you have any um, thoughts on this story as a whole or on GameStop? I think it's important to remember, and I've heard this from a lot of my friends and people who are economists, the stock market does not reflect the health of the economy. That's a big thing to keep in mind. And there's ton, there are tons of articles out there and I'm not even going to begin to <laughs> attempt to explain everything because I'm still wrapping my head around it, around the stock market. But like Dan said, I, I feel like, dang, I wish I had bought stock in GameStop, but someone, for example, there's a gentleman who invested $55,000 and he's walking away with $35 million, which is out, outstanding return on investment. But most people don't have or don't want to risk $55,000 that they could lose. Right. So, and I don't know. I, yeah. And I don't know if taxes are going to be involved with this. You know, oh, I'm I, sure you have to report stocks on, on taxes, yeah. right? I would yeah. imagine any earnings. Because. Yeah, because I think with the Robinhood thing, they stopped the users, but the hedge funds were still able to do what they were doing. Correct, Dan? So the hedge funds weren't buying. What what Robinhood did was it stopped retail investors from buying and driving up the price. The hedge uh -huh. fund was already invested into it because they had borrowed it from a lender months beforehand. So... The only thing you could do on Robinhood, which is 0% commission, and it's supposed to be for everyday people who don't typically invest. Mm -hmm. um, so it just it, it, it stopped them cold there and it only allowed them to sell on certain stocks. So uh, my assumption that some hedge funds could get out of short sales. Right. <laughs> Well, everybody, that is the end of our new segment. I'm um, going to hand it, hand it back over to our host, Ed. All right. And everybody, it is now time for our Doc Well Finances, Money, Sales. It's Nintendo's shareholders' financial meeting, and we got numbers. Where were the sales? Where were the losses? 
We discuss it all. And I'm going to hand it over to Dan for this portion of the show. Dan, take it away. All right. Thanks, Ed. Um, anybody who knows me, I'm a numbers geek. So, of course, when the financials come out, I, I'm i wide awake looking at it first thing in the morning. Um, and, you know, just by first glance, this is a common thing theme we talk about on this podcast. Nintendo is killing it. Um so, you know, just to jump right into it, um, the top 10 didn't change at all. Uh, it stayed the same. Sorry, I have so many tabs open with all of this. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Coming in, coming in 10th, we got Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. Ninth is Splatoon 2. Pokemon Let's Go is 8th. Super Mario Party 7. Mario Odyssey 6. Pokemon Sword and Shield is five. Breath of the Wild is four. Smash Brothers Ultimate three. And this is what was a, a little bit surprising to some, but Animal Crossing is number two to Mario Kart Deluxe. And I'm uh, thanks. Shout out to Jack Bro on our Discord. He had mentioned that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was packaged with switches. So um, that could have been the driving force behind these uh, these sales. But looking into it a little bit deeper, um, Mario Kart had a growth of from September 30th to December 31st. They sold 4.42 million copies and Animal Crossing New Horizons sold 5.14 million copies. So Animal Crossing did outsell it a little bit, um, but it... Mario Kart is still number one at 33.41 million. So, um, you know, the success with Animal Crossing, it, it's crazy. This game hasn't been out a year. It's at 31.18 million units. And the first year anniversary comes up in March. Where do you think that number is going to sit when it comes out, when it comes up to it? I think they're going to hit like 38. I think 38. 38. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a big jump uh, because people are getting their taxes um, um, trying to tax. get a switch. Yeah, tax time. Trying to get a switch because people can't really get an Xbox and they can't really get a PS5. Um, and we're still in quarantine at some places. Um, so if people get their hands on a Nintendo Switch, you know, Animal Crossing is going to be that tax rate to it. Yeah, I I think it'll be up to 35. I think that would be my guess. Um, What my question about those numbers is just where are these Mario Kart sales coming from? Because and I know this is anecdotal, but everybody I I know like already has Mario Kart. I mean that span that Mario Kart eight right has spanned two consoles right with Mm -hmm. the Wii and the Switch. It it just seems like I, I. I, I find it hard to believe that there's as many new players of Mario Kart as there are people flocking to Animal Crossing, which I see people all the time trying Animal Crossing for the first time. So that that's my initial kind of reaction to that. You got to think that people who skipped the Wii U in Mario Kart 8, mm-hmm. they are now becoming Switch players because they see other people getting it. And it's one of those attached ratio kind of games like Breath of the Wild and, and Malay and even Splatoon. Those are attached ratios to the Switch. When you get a Switch, you already yeah. know in your mind what yeah. you're going to buy. Yeah. And Mario Kart is always that. And of course, you know, with family and friends and playing online and stuff. Um, but people who miss the Wii U version is getting like the complete package. So if if they got that attachment ratio to the Switch, that number is just going to continue to grow, pack in or by itself. And then definitely getting it digital or forty or twenty percent or forty percent off, they're going to take a whole of whatever sale they could get to. Because once Mario Kart goes on sale, that's when numbers rise and stuff. And don't forget, and don't forget, Mario Kart came out in April, a month after the Switch, and it's been on the top ten list ever since. Yeah, and to piggyback on what you're saying, the familiarity of it, it's, um, you know, like when parents are buying for their kids, mm. you know, people that are like 35 to 45 grew up with Mario Kart. That's what they know. And I think that actually also adds to um, New Super Mario Brothers Deluxe being in the 10th. I think those two are just very, very safe bets for 
any new Nintendo buyer. I mean, if you if you bought a Switch, I guarantee you, like Mario Kart is probably one of your first three games that you're buying. You know, and um, Celeste, what do you what do you think? Where do you think Animal Crossing is going to sit? It's hard to say because uh, some people might go crazy with their their refunds, but then some people are out of work and might need it, might need to <laughs> squirrel away some money. So it's it's interesting because gaming seems to be very doing very healthy mm-hmm. right now, even though a lot of people are out of work. So I don't. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I guess I see maybe 32 million, a little bit more. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say because I, I know some people haven't played Animal Crossing yet, but there are also a lot of people who played it from the very beginning and now they've kind of dropped off because they got repetitive. They're bored. I don't know. I don't know. Do, do you guys think it's going to top Mario Kart 8, or do you think it's going to stay at number two? I, I don't think they... so. I think it's going to stay at number two. I think Mario Kart is, is still going to be... as uh, Until Animal Crossing is higher on a lot of the charts for USA and for Mitsu and stuff, if their sale, number, sale numbers continue to stay over Mario Kart, probably for the next seven months, I would say, then it would take it over. Other than that, if Mario Kart is still higher than Animal Crossing, and I I think uh, Mario's going to be continue to stay as number one. What about you, David? Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm almost wondering if Switch sales need to slow down for animal crossing to overtake it and what i mean by that is like if what you all are saying is true that when people buy a switch their first thing is okay i'm buying a mario kart right that if the market becomes saturated with switches then people who already have them who are looking for other games their next sort of tier of purchases might be like an animal crossing Mm -hmm. and so that's where i could see like the numbers like eventually catching up um but as long as switch remains red hot and you're talking about with that attach rate people are buying Mario Kart right away, then maybe it, maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't pass it. Celeste. I I think as, I think if people start to become more and more stir crazy, they might just bite that dang animal crossing bullet (laughs) and (laughs) get it. They want to keep up with their friends. They want to try something new. I don't know. Will it pass? Well, if they keep adding all these really cool updates, I think that that could really help because people will have that fear of missing out mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm I actually think Animal Crossing is going to surpass Mario Kart Eight. I think, um, I mean, ever since Animal Crossing has come out, I know it's still pretty new, but even during the holiday season, Animal Crossing did outsell Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. So I think probably by mid-year, I think we could see it jump. We're talking about 2.5 million to make that to make that leap right over Mario Kart Eight. And I don't know, like you said, David, Mario Kart. I know who doesn't have Mario Kart. <laughs> Can we add that ColourPop, ColourPop has an Animal Crossing makeup collection right now? It is everywhere. And, and the other thing about Animal Crossing, too, is like there are so many age groups that are playing it. It's like yeah. anybody from the age of 40 to 60 are interested in this game. Um, but there's a lot of people that I know that are playing Animal Crossing that wouldn't be interested in Mario Kart. So, uh, you know, the last thing. I just added that, Dan, that, you know, Nintendo benefited, you know, by the freak chance of of the pandemic with Animal Crossing, right? Like, it was a great game, but clearly it was, like, the game for the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, Maybe what determines whether it passes it or not is what these new variants of the virus do. And if it does trigger a lot of lockdowns, like Celeste was saying, then maybe that is when when people really commit to a game like Animal Crossing. Um, I know that we... 
in my household, my daughter's birthday is in February and the pandemic was just starting last year and we had to cancel her birthday party. And this year we are not even trying with a birthday party. We're having an Animal Crossing birthday party. So all of her friends are coming over to her island and, and bringing presents on Animal Crossing. Uh, That's so, so awesome. So, so we, we have merged our worlds a bit. So <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. Anybody else want to talk about Animal Crossing or should we move on to a few of the other numbers? We could talk about other numbers. All right. So just um, just to throw out there what the growth was for a few of these other games that were on the top 10. Uh, Breath of the Wild, they're up to 21.45 million. They've sold 1.71 since September 30th to December 31st. Smash mm-hmm. Brothers Ultimate sold 1.75 million in that span. Um Super Mario Odyssey is still selling well. They sold 1.34 million in there. That's um, crazy. Yeah. So Super Mario 3D All Stars, I thought was going to take a top 10 spot. They sold 2.51 million um, copies in that span. We're going to get onto that a little bit later. And Pikmin 3, 1.94 million. And next we got. I sent you guys a little chart. Age of Calamity sold 3.5 million. And this is up to date as of actually January 31st. I know most of these numbers are December 31st, Mm -hmm. Um, which makes it far and away the highest selling warrior style game. Or is it Misu style? Yeah. Um, So that makes it far and away the most, the highest selling out of that group. Now, is this a product of it being a Zelda game or are we going to see popularity in these style of games going forward? What do you guys think? Well, I, I think it, it tried to get popular or it's been a little bit popular ever since the first Harvard Warriors came out. Um, it made a lot of people check into the series and try the Gundam one, try look people looking forward to the persona one. Um, uh, They've been people have been getting more into the series because at they play the Harvard Warriors one. Um, I think what we'll see about this though with Harvard Warriors with Kobe Tecmo, Omega Force, and Nintendo, they'll probably do another one, but I don't think they if they do it, it won't be for another console. I don't think we'll get another one on Switch. Uh, with um, that. just just to throw out there, Hyrule Warriors sold one million copies on the Wii U. And it sold even less actually on the Switch. So combined on both systems, it didn't even reach two million. Wow. Okay, you have. I think it's because this is supposed to be part of the Breath of the Wild lore. So I think that's mm. a big driving force. Hyrule Warriors is fun. I, I played it on Wii U, but I will admit I did not get the port for the Switch. But because Age of Calamity is supposed to be a prequel to Breath of the Wild, I want to know more about this story. Yeah, I I think it's it's inseparable from Breath of the Wild, and I and I I would actually say that those Breath of the Wild sales from November thirtieth to now probably mm-hmm. owe at least some part of their numbers to Age of Calamity coming out. Um, I think one thing that's interesting on that chart that we are all referencing, the Hyrule Warriors sales are from its first quarter, and it dominates all the um, Warriors game sales, which are lifetime sales. So who knows? You know, I imagine it'll creep up a bit for its lifetime sales. Um, I, I absolutely guarantee we will see another Zelda Warriors game at some some point down the line. Um, I, I think it's a no-brainer. Are you willing to eat your shoe over that statement? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think that this game in particular brought a lot of people who don't usually play these style of games into it. I, I'm one, for example, I've never played a warrior style game. I never had any interest in it. Um, and I still don't, but a lot of people I know that tried this for the first time actually really liked the style of this game. So I think, I think throwing the age of calamity 
um, well, Breath of the Wild brand onto it and bringing back these familiar characters brought some new customers into the series. And we'll probably see um, warrior style of games get a little more popular. So we'll see. And I think their formula has gotten better, too, as somebody that sank hundreds of hours into both games. That this was much better in terms of the controls. Nice. All right. Um, moving on. Pokemon actually sold, got above 20 million uh, copies. They sold 1.33 million between September 30th and December 31st. And this actually makes it the best selling JRPG of all time. If you could believe it. Um, did any of you guys get into this game? I'm still trying to wrap my head around what you just said. That's the best selling JRPG of all time. Of all time. Wow. Yep. It's it. So yeah, it, um, at 19.2 million. I, I tried looking up any, cause someone had said that on Twitter and I tried looking up the most popular JRPGs there are and no Pokemon sword and shield is the highest selling one. So I just wanted to ask you, there was a lot of controversy around, um, Pokemon when it was being released people mm-hmm. with national decks, um, frame rates dropping, uh, you know, graphics weren't, necessarily updated in people kind of saw it as a lazy made game um do you think that affected the sales even though it's above 20 million celeste what do you think Uh, i mean i've I've never really played pokemon games except uh what was like pokemon snap pokemon stadium pokemon puzzle league hey you pikachu my sisters were the big pokemon players all the spinoffs yes all the (laughs) spinoffs at pokemon stadium i think i said that um just people who love Pokemon are going to buy these Pokemon games. They're going to snatch them up. I think they're going to love them. They're going to find something to love about them regardless. Yeah. They're going to defend them to the grave. What do you think, Ed? Um, I don't think, you know, uh, <laughs> Pokemon is just popular among everybody. Like, Hearing that they did 20 million for Sword of Shield is amazing. You know, I I got the double pack. People put, like got single ones. Right now, Pokemon is like the hardest kind of cards to find everywhere. So you kind of see the influence of Pokemon for its games and everything. There, too many people play it. There's too many fans for it. Every day, someone is talking about Pokemon. Every day, there's some kind of fan art or some costume about Pokemon. And Sword and Shield, people are still playing it and getting into it. They're still streaming it and showing that it's still out there collecting Pokemon and raising and stuff. So, to hear that number, I think Pokemon is going to go strong. And, and it's good to see because everybody wanted a Pokemon for Switch. They got it. And look what happened to it. It did it, it, it so well. And people are still enjoying the DLC for it. Yeah. Um, I, I think this kind of goes back to what we were saying about Mario Kart, where it's kind of one of those uh, safe purchases, typically with parents. And, you know, I think because I'm so invested in video games and read a lot of news and I spend a lot of time in video game Twitter, um, I think my bubble is a lot smaller than what I actually think it is. <laughs> so, you know, I see a lot of people complaining on Twitter and I see a few articles here and there popping out, but you know, I have to realize too, that these hundred people that are online complaining aren't part of the 20 million that are buying it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it hurt it a little bit, but I think also the people that were complaining were such diehard Pokemon fans mm-hmm. that they still didn't <laughs> want to miss one. You know, they were just upset about what uh, came out. And to be honest with you, I didn't think it was that great of a game either. So um, they're just still going strong and they got an anniversary coming up. So we'll see if they'll touch up on some more uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Next up, I'm just going to go over the mobile games. So mobile games are actually still doing really well for Nintendo, which is 
very surprising. I believe it was like maybe six months ago, 12 months ago. I don't know. Time's blending together with uh, this pandemic. Um, they actually grew 13.8% in the last, in this quarter. And this is for basically all the games combined. Dr. Mario World, Fire Emblem Heroes, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, Super Mario Run, Mario Kart Tour, and um, I believe there's one other one. Um, do you guys play these games at all? No. Not at no. all. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I've seen a little bit of news out there thinking, saying that Tencent and Nintendo are trying to do something together. So I'm, a, I'm guessing that since Nintendo is going up every quarter on mobile games and they're putting almost no effort into it, maybe this partnership with them and Tencent lets Tencent take over the uh, Nintendo mobile games and maybe something good will come out of it. I do know that Nintendo is hiring writers for their mobile games. Um, as I've been watching the Nintendo job openings, um, that is constantly listed as a position they're trying to fill. Um, you know, take that for what it is. But uh, I, I, I think it also goes back for me to what you said, Dan. My bubble is smaller than I think it is because I don't know anyone that plays <laughs> Nintendo games. <laughs> I do play Mario Kart tours sometimes still, so you know one person. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and next up, Nintendo Switch. It is at 79.87 million units sold. This means they are now the fifth best selling, and they just reached, uh, they just passed Nintendo 3DS. Um, they're still going to be behind Wii by looks like 22 million the nintendo ds sold 154 million i think that's probably a cy young type record that'll never be broken <laughs> <laughs> uh game boy has sold one uh 118.69 million so it's still behind those three um guys the switch just keeps on selling we keep talking about it is it gonna keep selling did it, it, and the other thing i wanted to ask you since it surpassed the 3ds and nintendo's not supporting the 3ds do you guys think that they're going to do another portable system or is the switch the portable system going forward i think this is the system going forward um i think when they get into their next console i think they're going to approve what the switch is um they know they got a hit on their hand and so they're gonna be like how do we make it better how do we innovate but still give them something that they will love from their previous system before what about you celeste i agree I, <laughs> I thought i would play my switch games on the tv way more than i actually do uh it's just so easy to curl up in the recliner with the switch port and <laughs> play whatever I want. Um, oh, sorry, my phone is ringing here. Um, my my out of the box prediction here, because Nintendo never does what we think Nintendo is going to do, um, is that they have the surprise option of coming out with a Nintendo phone that is a combination of a handheld system and combines all of their Nintendo apps for mobile games that they have been uh, running. That's total speculation, but you know what? If we can speculate on a Switch Pro, which has never been confirmed by Nintendo, <laughs> I can speculate on a Nintendo phone as the new handheld, which I would totally throw my money at. Your phone was just <laughs> coincidence. Hmm. That was total coincidence. <laughs> you know, I kind of, I kind of would like Nintendo to do like a, like, get with Microsoft and do a Surface tablet for Nintendo, like that. And so not only are you playing games, because in China they're still playing Wii games on a tablet in HD. Mm. You know, they haven't even played Wii U or Switch games just yet. They're still on Wii in China. Um, I kind of would like to see what they could do with their own kind of tablet and stuff. 
I've actually read a little bit about um, uh, a Nintendo phone kind of being in the works. So I don't think it's that. Uh, actually, I do think it's that crazy. I don't think it's that crazy <laughs> that it'll happen, but I think the concept and idea of it is a little bit crazy to me. <laughs> so um, there was yeah. a Microsoft phone for a while, right? Yeah. My, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, that's. We'll see. Um, but speculation is the topic of our next <laughs> segment here. So looking at the stocks, Nintendo has gone from $38 a share in March where the market crashed. And now we are sitting at about earlier when I checked today, I think it was $78. Um, so this is it's 77 right now. So this is pretty significant. They have gone up um, all year. In the last five years, I mean, the highest they've been is about 56, and that was back in 2018. Nintendo is projecting a stock increase for the first and second quarter coming up in 2021. So I'm going to list off the games that are coming out in the West. Super Mario 3D World, Bravely Default 2, Monster Hunter Rise, and Pokemon Snap. This is all we know about Nintendo's first quarter coming up. So, I ask you guys, what is causing them to think that there's going to be a spike in stock sales? Because as of now, we don't know anything. And I also just want to throw out a quick news article that happened today nintendo is preparing a big multiplayer overhaul probably for games and development in 2020 every task currently taken by nex is going to be switched over to npln it's currently in preview phase and monster hunter um monster hunter demo was a way to test how it worked under load so there could be many things because we have a bunch of um we have a bunch of uh anniversaries. anniversaries coming up we have anniversaries coming up we have speculations of the switch pro and i'm gonna throw this one out at you too um with everything kind of coming off on march 31st we could be looking at some sort of subscription-based service and this overhaul of the multiplayer platform could be a uh, uh, indicator that that's happening so david let's start with you why do you think nintendo thinks their stock is going to increase i i think they've they've been holding out on us i think they have a lot of stuff that they're about to drop um i think we're going to get something big for uh zelda anniversary i think we will get something for pokemon and i actually think they're going to surprise a lot of people and have stuff for metroid's anniversary as well so, you know, those things are going to help sales, but I think the big one that they are finally going to release is the Switch Pro. And um, I think, you know, Nintendo is already dominating in console sales, and then you introduce something like that, it, it's going to be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And um, I also forgot to throw out there that there was this article, take it with a full grain of salt, Ed might be <laughs> showering salt all over this one but uh there <laughs> an australian retailer may have leaked breath of the wild 2 coming out in the second quarter um so again take what you will with that celeste we'll, we'll go with you next and then save ed ed's chomping at the bit right now <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't know if their stocks could be they could think their stocks are going up i guess it's what David said they, they could be releasing a lot of cool merchandise, some cool games. They've been pretty quiet. Paper Mario Origami King was a surprise last summer. It was announced, and then a few weeks later, it was available. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that with some more games. Maybe we're going to see some more showcases, some more directs. I would really like that. I'm the possibility. It's only it's only February first right now as of this recording, so. Well, oh, Celeste, you're, I mean, you're a huge Zelda fan. What, what, what do you want to see aside from Breath of the Wild too? 
I like to see some collections. I, I mean, I have access to pretty much whatever Zelda game I'd like to play, but I do realize that a lot of fans would like to see some collector's editions like the Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I think that would be awesome to be come over to switch bring on classic ocarina of time bring on classic majora's mask ed i don't want to hear your opinion about majora's mask i love you <laughs> <laughs> okay it's okay i'm picking on you um skyward sword that i'm beating a dead horse with this one but bring it to the switch because not everybody has a wii or not everybody has a wii and i want to play it without motion controls Skyward Sword, please. Not every, everybody deserves a chance to play that game. It's a beautiful game. It's fun. The lore is integral to the series. Nice. All right, Ed, why do you think Nintendo thinks their stock is going up? Uh, of course, it's, the, it's definitely the games. Uh, we got Shin Megami Tensei 5 coming. We got uh, Shin Megami Tensei and Eternal coming. You know, like the big RPGs are hitting it. We got a lot of cloud-based games that could be on Switch. Just think of Final Fantasy VII Remake being on Switch. Cloud-based. Like, just think, like, they got that trailer with Sephiroth in Smash. The way that he looks. If you don't think they could have a possibility of doing a direct, ending it with Final, Set, Final, Final Fantasy VII Remake is available now on Nintendo Switch to Square Enix Cloud. Do you know how many people will do- re-download <laughs> that game and buy it and stuff? <laughs> and, and it'd be like, and also get Final Fantasy VII, the regular game, for free if you buy it on cloud. Like, Square Enix is going to be a big contender for for Nintendo this year. They see where the money is coming from, you know. Do you, so, do you think that um, the overhaul of the multiplayer online is because of the cloud gaming? Probably so. Probably, probably so. Their, the cloud system has been working fine for it and if they could update that system so that it could run a little bit more smoother and perfect i think cloud gaming is going to be a big thing for nintendo to get these big triple a systems on their uh system do this do this do this thing because i'm like just like resident evil 8 is coming in uh, of resident evil village is coming in may it could drop in halloween time for switch to the cloud you know, and that would be a good time for it. There could be a lot of great games, and we don't even know what Microsoft might be even put on it. You know, we definitely gonna probably see Sony sometime put MLB the show because there's a case for Xbox. But we look, I think people who are Nintendo players would be looking for that game because they need an MLB game and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of games that's probably unexpected coming. I don't think we're gonna get Breath of Breath of the Wild two and the second quarter you know there's i don't feel like there is a release date ready i don't even think that game is ready yet to show off um because i think anuma and his team are thinking about a lot of things are incorporating are trying and seeing what works and stuff but i know they're probably just like there are so many ideas that has came into that game they kind of had to stop and they're probably just like we want to make sure that we get this working and fix this bug and make sure this is going i think they i think a treader is ready um like they cut a nice new treader that's going to actually show off the game but i think the game itself is not ready i i would say probably 60 percent of the game is ready and 40 percent is still being developed and being worked on and um, if we get mlb the show for switch before we get mario sluggers i'm gonna riot <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to write it or are you going to buy the game and then write it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I, sticking to it. I'm sticking to my guns. I think if if it's not the Switch Pro releasing, I think we're actually going to get an announcement. Um, you know, Ed, I know you brought up Shimagama Tensei, but in my opinion, that game is not enough to have Nintendo project their stocks going up. But you know yeah, what I think mean? Go- you got to think about Japan, though. That's the thing about it. Japan could raise USA stocks because of those games selling. You know, Shin Megami Tensei is... Persona 5 became big because of Shin Megami Tensei. But the thing about it is, we didn't really get that serious because Persona 5 took that place, in a sense. And so, people have been waiting for that game to be coming. So now, it's equal in Japan in America. So they, a lot, But a lot of people are in Japan are waiting for that game to come out. 
I I understand that it is popular and it is that much, but for a mm-hmm. game that isn't going really to break, I'm just going to even say 15 million copies. That's not enough for a corporation like Nintendo who is printing money with their switches and Mario Kart 8 and Animal Crossing like in order for the stock to go up that means it has to hang out with Animal Crossing it has to hang out with Mario Kart 8 mm-hmm. Deluxe and it has to have something new and big so my it because Shimagasi doesn't need a big thing Sega and Atlas needs it and Sega and Atlas, if they could get, the, if they could just get on the Nintendo system and sell past a million or two, don't forget, Atlas is used to be a company that only sold probably five hundred thousand games, and you literally had to go to another state to find particular games of their library until like the DS happened and it was making Atlas popular and keeping them in money. If Atlas could touch Nintendo with some great games, um, and Sega could get some of that money too, they're gonna make Nintendo look better with a lot of their games. You know, um, it it took a while for Atlas to get the recognition for what they deserve, and they've been releasing stuff for Nintendo for years compared to what they have done with Sony. Yeah, I, and I mean, yeah, they're they're gonna sell great. I think they're gonna be fine. But I just, again, I I don't think that's enough for them to predict a spike. And I think with this overhaul of the multiplayer platforming uh, multiplayer online Mm -hmm. i think we're going to see a subscription-based service i think this is going to be something that brings in monthly money uh we're going to have full access to games that are on super nintendo hopefully gamecube nintendo 64 um you know because we did see mario 3d all-stars all as part of emulators right Mm -hmm. um i think we can get some sort of announcement if not probably see a switch pro um i think there's going to be even more variations of the switch i don't think we're done at the switch pro i think they're just going to keep building and building and building on top of this um so even if it's not the switch pro i do think we are going to see new hardware um and i think the subscription-based service is going to be enough for nintendo to project their sales to go up and for them to just print more cash so that's that's where i stand we don't we don't know what games are coming out we know what's in production but we haven't seen anything about it and i think we're waiting to see that on a on you know higher resolution out there yep so again it's all projection who knows um anybody have any final thoughts on this thank you nitter for making that Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I said thank you, Nintendo, for making all this money. You know, I, you, <laughs> to to be real with you, everybody before Switch came out, people already hated on the system and say that this system would never have games like what Sony and Microsoft would have. And look at the vast library that they have. They have on that system. Look how look how improved a lot of people wrong and way past their expectations of what that system is going to be and it kind of changed a lot of people's lives in gaming um the way that they game the games that they play the games that they purchase and stuff like the switch the switch has done that i've never seen no other system that has done that before like the nintendo switch so to see these financial records from nintendo is well deserved because they've been doing it right um I just wanted to add in, uh, and I, I agree with everything Ed just said. Um, earlier, you asked Celeste what she wanted for a, a Zelda 35 anniversary. And related to your comment about an online subscription service, Dan, uh, I would like to see Nintendo give us um, randomizers for early Zelda games. Like one thing that I've been dying to play is like a randomizer for A Link to the Past, which is mm-hmm. one of my all-time favorite Zelda games. But I literally have every part of that game memorized and i don't play emulators um so it would be great to have some official capacity where nintendo offers that on their console for classic zelda games through their online service that would be that would be awesome yeah um before we wrap up the segment i just want to fact check myself on something so uh short and uh, sword and shield is not the highest selling 
JRPG of all time. It's actually Pokemon Red, Green, and Blue and Yellow. Ah. And that's at 47.5 million. And then there's also uh, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum at 24.7 million. So <clears throat> Pokemon takes the top spot for <laughs> all three <laughs> of the <laughs> highest selling JRPGs of all time. Um, and then uh, just another fact I want to throw out there too before we wrap up the segment uh david had brought this up before we started so luigi's mansion 2 had sold is up to 9.13 million units sold and that puts them as the highest selling zelda game of all time <laughs> aside from breath of the wild so wait luigi's mansion 2 or luigi's oh mansion? i'm sorry luigi's mansion 3 okay on switch has sold 9.13 and that sold higher than any Zelda game ever made aside from Breath of the Wild. Second place is Twilight Princess with 8.69 million units sold. That's incredible. I never would have guessed that. I know Link's, <laughs> I know Link's Awakening on Switch did where they good. I think it did a million, a million or two. I, but Lu- Luigi's Mansion, I mean, Lu- it's now a, a force franchise, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, we should be talking about it in the same way that we talk about some of the other really successful franchises for Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's just getting popularity. And um, the this recent one, we'll get into it when, I, um, when we talk about what we've been playing. But it was... Uh, it's really good. I, I think the next. I think they're just going to keep getting better and better and better, and people are just going to catch on. Uh, Ed, to answer your question, Link's Awakening sold four million. Okay, that's still good. I, it's amazing to keep seeing a lot of Nintendo's first party pass a million games. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't you don't really get that often for one particular game on one particular system. You know. Yeah. So, so I think that's a good segue to just say the way to sum up these financials is Nintendo's killing it and it looks like they're going to continue to kill it. So I'm looking forward to the next one. I can't wait to see what's coming up in the next quarter. So, um, cool. Thanks for letting me handle this one, Ed, and I'll give it back to you. All right, everybody. We're going to get into our final session of the show. Playing with power. David, what have you been playing with power? Uh, I have been playing almost exclusively Animal Crossing and Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive <laughs> Edition. Um, my wife recently got a Switch. I talked about that in previous shows, and she's full on addicted to Animal Crossing. Got her friends to get in on Animal Crossing as well, and bought a Switch. Um, so we've been we've been playing a lot of that around here. And then uh, when I get my own time, I've been going through Xenoblade Chronicles, which. Uh, was my Christmas gift to myself, and uh, I'm enjoying that tremendously. Yes. So, Les, what have you been playing with power? I try to check into Animal Crossing every day for at least 15 to 30 minutes, and yes. I've been playing a little bit of When the Past Was Around, which is from, uh, please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it, it's from the same studio that brought us Coffee Talk, Toge Productions, T O G E. It's really cool. It's a point and click puzzle game and it's telling a very poignant story without any speaking. Is that with the girl with the long hair, the dress? It it is and you are trying it I think it's just talking she it's kind of reminiscing over things that she's gone through and loved ones. And I've been playing some Calico as well. Very mm-hmm. cute game. Yes. Um the game that you just spoke about, uh, it has a demo on it, I think. Uh, I need to buy that game. The music is fantastic. I was into the story. Like, the animation is beautiful. I'm like, I, I need to buy this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so good. Uh, I didn't know that you bought it. That makes yeah. me happy now. <laughs> the past was around. I'm really liking it. Yes. Dan, what have you been playing with Power? So actually, right before we started recording, I wrapped up uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, and I'm so glad I played that game again. I I actually breezed through it this weekend because I was snowed snowed in and had nothing to do. But um, 
the puzzles were great. It was super rewarding finding all the gems and kind of exploring everything. Um, I finished with a B because I didn't find any rare ghosts or really go after booze, but I did get all the gems in it. And um, I, I just thought it was a super cool game. So I'm happy I played that. Um, I've been streaming Mario Maker 2, uh, getting back into that a little bit. And I'm definitely rusty, but we're, we're catching back on. And then um, I've been playing Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. I don't oh. know if you guys have played that, but mm. oh my god, that is like... Th- it's one of the best games. A lot of people refer to it as Donkey Kong 94, and it's a game that really, really held up well. And it's it's actually the uh, it was the game where like the triple jump was um, first established in Mario, and the uh, backspring too. So you guys have to check that out. I I'll I'll send you a link on how I played. It was the same thing that. Um, we played that game you were talking about, David. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's on it's on that website. So yeah, it's it's super fun and everybody should check that game out. All right. Uh with me, um, I played the Master on the Rise demo with Laron and Dan. Uh, we got our fine. We, we finally got to hunt together. Um, uh, so hopefully we can play the full game together. Definitely with Jacob. Uh, and thank you guys so much for teaching me the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, um, uh, that's why Leron is the master hunter. Like he's a hunter for hire. He's a gun hunter. He was um, good. <laughs> yes. Um. So yes, and anywhere anybody who's watching this, the demo is still going, but you cannot play online. So um, I uh, I'm playing Cyber Shadow. Um, uh, I've been saying the review was coming. Uh, I'm enjoying this game. Uh, but. I kind of have some problems here and there, but wait for the review to come out. I am enjoying it. Uh, last but not least, uh, Nino Kuni. I am playing. I'm grinding in that game. I just got the Cat King back from um, the uh, rat that kidnapped him. Um, so I was kind of still early in the game, but I'm making my way through it and definitely enjoying that game. Um, I would recommend that game to Celeste. It looks cute. Yeah. <laughs> in it i'm gonna play it yeah, yeah St- studio ghibli did the animation for it oh yes i i think my boyfriend started it on is it on playstation xbox yes yeah. yeah okay so he played it on one of the systems and it just looks so cute and pretty yeah. i need to play it. i, I really like the animation in that game i thought it was it was really cool it's it's super unique too yes it is so um, but that's all I've been playing with power. Um, last but not least, I'm sorry. Uh, I know this is not part of the show, but I did finish Final Fantasy VII Remake, and so I'll talk about that on um, uh, another podcast. Yes, I did enjoy it. Um, I have thoughts, but I will leave it right there. Uh, but everybody, that has been the show. We're going to get into some quick plugs. So that's where can we find you? Find me on Twitter and Instagram at FairyCrypt. If you want to add me on Instagram, you're going to have to request to follow me. And I want you to send me a DM so I know that you're not a bot or a creeper. Dan, where can we find you? Uh, You can find me on Twitter at DCDM99. David, where can we find you? At David Lasby on Twitter. At ZeldaDungeon.net, BossRushGames.com, and TheMighty.com. You guys can find me on Twitter at that Retro Code. I have all my password stuff. Not password. I have my Switch, PSN, and Xbox stuff right there. Um, you also can find me on Optional Opinion, Recap, Talk the Walk, and other podcasts here on Bosch Push Games. With that, everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Let's get some good gaming in. And as always, be you, be more, and be better to one another. Why? Because we just want to play video games. With that, everybody, we will see you next time on Nintendo Pop Lot. Bye, everybody. Woo-hoo! Have a good night, everyone.